earlier we have seen different microwave components we have seen your attenuator we have seen the phase shifter we have seen e plenty s plenty magic key and today we will see one more microwave component that is the directional coupler okay so if you are seeing the directional coupler direct, uh, directional coupler it is made from the wave guide so what we are having we are having two different wave guides and we are putting two different wave guide one on the top of another okay two different wave guides we are putting one on the top of the another so that here what is happening these two wave guides are having one common wall these two wave guides are having one common wall and you are knowing that in wave guide you will have the power the power that is flow power will flow now what we will do we will insert the hole in the common wall so that power can be transmitted from one wave guide to another wave guide okay let us see if you are seeing this is your two hole directional coupler this is your two hole directional coupler you are having a two different holes if you are seeing this your port 1 and port 2 this is one wave guide and your port 3 and port 4 this is one more wave guide and they are having a these are the common walls they are having these are the common wall so let us assume this is point a and this is point b so at point a and point b we have made hole so when we are putting uh, when we are making hole at point a whatever the power that is incident from your port 1 it is moving towards here port 4 and some is moving towards this port 3 similarly at point b also some of the power may be going towards port 4 some of the power may be going towards your port 3 so your input is at your port 1 uh, port 1 your output is there at port 2 input is port 1 output is at port 2 you will see that part of the power that is coming from your port 1 and moving from your point a and point b they are approaching towards your port 4 so these power if you are considering your point a and point b these two are in phase these two are in phase as these two are in phase you will get a part of the power at your port 4 also so you are having power at port 2 you are having part of power at your port 4 also so this is your main arc and this is your say auxiliary arc so this is your called main output and this is called your coupled output at your port 3 at port 3 from your point a some of the power is coming here and some of the power is coming here from your point b also so while designing the directional coupler we are designing it in such a way that the distance between your this point a and point b it should be lambda g by 4 where lambda g is your guide wavelength okay so if we are first we have to calculate what is the guide wavelength of this wave guide and from that we are designing these points a and b okay so we are keeping the distance that much so if we are keeping the distance of the lambda g by 4 and if we are getting the power at point a and point b that are approaching towards your port 3 these are such that it will be 180 degree out of phase as these two powers are 180 degree out of phase you will not get any power at your port 3 so ideally you should get power at port 1 and port 2 you should get part of the power at port 4 and you should not get any power at port 3 you are not getting any power at port 3 because whatever the power that is coming from your port uh, from your point a and point b they are 180 degree out of phase and they are designed in such a way that they are having a distance of your lambda g by 4 so when we are making a distance of your point a and point b 
lambda divided by 4, then we can achieve this uh, phase shift of 180 degrees. Okay, so this is the basic principle of your directional coupler. So this is called your input port, this is called your main output port, this is called your coupled port, and this is called your isolation port. Input port, you are having main output port, you are having coupled port, and you are having isolation port. So ideally, you should not get any power at port 3. By seeing this, we can also say that directional coupler, it is used to measure unidirectional power. Here what is happening? That from here the power is flowing. So you can measure unidirectional, not bidirectional. Okay, because here you are not getting any power. So it is used for measuring unidirectional power and when we are measuring, we are measuring it at the coupled port. That how much power you are getting at your port 4. Okay, so it is used for measuring the unidirectional power at your coupled port. This is your two hole directional coupler. Two hole directional coupler. In two hole directional coupler, you are having two holes. You may have multi hole directional coupler. Multi hole directional coupler, there it is the extension of your two hole. So if you are seeing this one, this is your four hole directional coupler. Okay, so four hole is your multi hole only. But the principle remains the same. If we are trying to know the distance between your hole, it will be your lambda d by 4 again. Okay, so distance between any two hole will remain the same, that is your lambda d by 4. And remaining principle will be the same. So this is your multi hole directional coupler. One more you are having, that is your B hole directional coupler. Two hole or multi hole, there what we are doing? Say, let us assume that this is your one waveguide and this is another waveguide. So, two waveguides we have made in such a way that the, the place where they are having the length, these are we have made one another. So, below you are having one more you are having on the top and they are having the common wall. So, in that we can make the hole. But when we are going for the B hole, in the B hole we are making it in such a way that their point of intersection should be minimum. So you are having this as a direction coupler, you are having this as one more, uh, say this you are having as a waveguide and this you are having one more waveguide. So these two waveguides we have joined in such a way that they are having the minimum point of contact. And the place where they are having at the point of contact, they will insert the hole. And because of this hole only, there will be transfer of power from one waveguide to another waveguide. If we are designing the directional coupler in this type, this is called your V hole directional coupler. Directional coupler. In your V hole directional coupler, you are having the main waveguide and you are having the auxiliary waveguide. If you are seeing here, here both the waveguides are such that they are having the minimum point of contact. And the place where they are having the minimum point of contact, there only we are making the hole so that the power can be transferred from your one waveguide to another waveguide. Directional coupler, the different applications are your, your directional coupler, it is used to measure the unidirectional power or you can say that it is used to measure power in one direction. We can even use it for your measurement of your standing wave ratio. We can use your directional coupler and similarly we can go for measuring the wave launching. Okay, so these are some of the applications of your directional coupler. Next, we will see the different parameters associated with the, the directional coupler. Parameters associated with your directional coupler. The different parameters are coupling factor, direct 
reactivity, isolation and return loss. All these parameters are measured in terms of dB. So, your coupling factor will be 10 log 10 P1 by P4. P1 is the port 1 and P4 that is your port 4. Directivity. If you are looking for the directivity, it is your 10 log 10 P4 by P3. Okay. So, if you are seeing your coupling factor, here we are seeing that how, how much power we are getting at your port 4. So, from port 1, the power is transmitted, you are getting power at port 2, but some sample power you are getting at your port 4. So, what is that sample power? So, in order to calculate the sample power, we are calculating the coupling factor. So, what is the coupling factor of the directional coupler? Second is your directivity. Directivity means uh, it is the ratio of your P4 to P3. If you are going for your P4, it is your coupled port and P3 that is the isolation port. Here, we will see that the directional coupler, how much it can able to identify between your forward moving variable, forward moving power and reverse power. Okay, so ideally we should not get any power at port 3. Ideally we should not get any power at port 3. But practically there may be very small amount of power. So that will go for your directivity. Okay. Third one is your isolation. Isolation means it is the ratio of your input power to your isolated port. So here, if you are seeing the isolation, it will be the product of your these two. If you are taking the product of these two, you will get the isolation. Here P1 by P4, here P4 by P3. So if you are calculating this one, you will get P1 by P3. And finally, you are having the return loss. Return loss means uh, it is the ratio of input power to your received power. Received power means uh, power at your port 2. For uh, directly writing power at port 2, we will write the received power and we will calculate the received power in the alternate way. Means your received power will be your input power minus sum of the power at the port 3 and port 4. The problem is say whatever you are having the input power, your total output power will be the same or it will be less than your input power. So, we are taking the summation of your port, uh, power at port 3 and port 4. Okay, that you are subtracting from your port 1. Whatever you are having, that power you will have directly at the port 2. So, we will calculate the power at the port 2 in indirect, uh, from indirect formula. Okay, so that is your return loss. Thank you.